Emil Hockayem is a Middle East analyst at the International Institute for Strategic Studies and the author of Syria's Uprising and the Fracturing of the Levant. Welcome, uh, Emil, to the program. First off, Good morning. W- will this um, deeper involvement by Putin in the issue, both militarily and diplomatically, is it going to change anything on the ground, do you think? It, it may help uh, uh, Bashar al-Assad recover some important territory because he had suffered some severe military setbacks recently. Um, and, uh, and Russia's military assistance uh, may be key in reversing those, those setbacks. Uh, Assad does need uh, the attack helicopters and the aircraft, uh, the Russian uh, helicopters and aircraft, uh, to provide close uh, uh, air support, for instance, for his troops as they defend uh, the Rav Valley in, in Latakia, or help protect uh, the surroundings of Damascus or retake Palmyra. Um, but uh, and politically, certainly uh, Russia's support uh, helps to re- rehabilitate him. Um, you know, a year ago, the tone at the UN General Assembly was very, very different from the one mm. uh, that we heard in the past couple of days regarding Assad's uh, fate. And and he is at the heart of the discussions and the issue. There are relatively fewer mentions of IS and no mentions of the so-called moderate opposition that I could see. Uh, how does it change the balance of power amongst the Arab observers and the Arab states, who, of course, are all in their own sense involved to, to varying degrees? How does that change? Um, one Arab official once told me um, a, after the Russian takeover of Crimea, I don't like what Putin does, but I like how he does it. And I think this summarizes uh, the whole uh, uh, perception from the Arab world that uh, President Putin is uh, ruthless, determined, macho, calculating, risk-taking. Uh, and they compare this to President Obama, uh, whose profit, professorial and very detached demeanor uh, have put off a lot of, of Arabs. So even if they disagree on substance with what Russia is doing, um, Russia comes across as a much more engaged, invested actor willing to seize opportunities. And on balance, uh, that helps Russia at a time of perceived American retrenchment in the Middle East. That's interesting. So it's almost admiration of, of one strong man for another in, 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 that, kind of, uh, uh, in that kind of respect. Um, We're uh, still deep misgivings about the wisdom of the move. Of and course. does it alter the balance of power, the kind of, you know, we often talk about the Sunni-Shia uh, divisions, which many see as, as behind uh, the various involvements, particularly of the Gulf countries and so on. Will they have been pleased or, or dismayed by what they heard? Um, it, 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 they, they would have been dismayed. And um, uh, in, in the, Russia's entry into, into Syria and the formation of this coalition between Russia, Iraq, Iran, Assad, and, you know, possibly Shia militias um, is, is a very troubling development that adds complexity to already a very, very difficult, very complicated uh, situation. Um, at the same time, um, Russia cannot be bypassed, and this is well understood in the Arab world, um, and, uh, and how to deal with Russia as the U.S. seems to be withdrawing from the region is certainly on every Arab leader's mind at this point. And some of them are inclined towards working with, uh, uh, with Russia closely, like uh, the, the right. um, Egyptian president, Sisi. Many thanks, Emil Hokayem, Middle East analyst at the International Institute for Strategic Studies.